Yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy. Let's back with another video for you guys, man. Back with another one, man. Now, this is 11 proofs that India is not like any other country. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love to learn new things. And I'm curious to see why it's not like any other country. So, without further ado, if you're new to the channel, go down below, smash a like, and subscribe. Welcome to the family. Let's go. Let's see why. And India, India is beautiful. How you doing? <laughs> well, I sure do. Me too. I've been to a lot of different countries, but there's one that will stick with me forever. India. Like India. I said, I'm pretty well traveled. I like to go abroad at least once a year. Okay. So I've got a lot of trips under my belt. But when a friend told me that I just have to see India, well, that's exactly what I did. I went in September, the last month of the summer monsoon. It was pretty dry and sunny, but with short rains here and there. The perfect weather for a traveler ask me. Being the confident and well-experienced globetrotter that I am, I went there prepared, and I thought I was ready for anything. Boy, was I wrong. The colors, the contrasts, the pace, the people, everything hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah, they do have a lot of colors going on. Like, it's kind of, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't understand why, but it's theirs. It's theirs. It's, it, looks, it looks beautiful. It's there, so I don't I don't understand it, but hopefully they'll explain it in this video. Go, even when I was already back home. As soon as I stepped out of the airport, I felt dizzy. It could have been the heat, the jet lag, or the hunger in my belly. Jet lag probably was the latter. So I decided to head out for some authentic Indian food as soon as I throw my bags in my hotel room. Now, the food there deserves a big shout out. First of all, Indians eat very little meat. In fact, For real? they have the lowest meat consumption per person in the wow. world. Most of their dishes are vegetarian, and meat is replaced with soy meat. Oh. This is mostly because 80% of the population is Hindu. I had no idea. Like you, I've always heard that Hinduism requires a strictly vegetarian diet, but that's not the case. It's just because they believe not eating meat minimizes the hurt they bring to other living beings. That's definitely one of the things I learned during... Oh. Interesting. See, I like I like to learn new things. I had no idea. Wow. My travels, and I was pleasantly surprised. Another thing about food in India is that it's all heavily spiced. That comes as no surprise, really, since India is well known across the world as the biggest spice producer and exporter. But there's one region that stands out exclusively in this regard: the state of Kashmir. It's Kashmir. The most valuable spice ever: saffron. Saffron. This flower isn't unique to India. It also grows in Iran and Spain. Kashmir, however, produces the highest quality and the most expensive saffron in the world. The town of Tampur is literally built around saffron fields. Mm. There are actually three varieties cultivated there. There is Mangra, the most expensive one, that costs about sixteen hundred dollars. Wow. Then you've got Lacha, which, interesting enough, Mangra and Lacha. No, not at all. The spice game is definitely on point. So, I found a good place to eat, and as soon as I saw the menu, I remembered that Indian is also famous for its large variety of teas, or as the locals call it, chai. Chai. You see the sheer number of options. I never thought there could be that many types of tea. If you're a tea drinker, huh? You know what? I, I'm Haitian. We're supposed to like spice, but I don't like spice that much. But depending on certain foods I eat, Spice, you know what I mean? If I would if I would go to India, I gotta be careful what I eat because too much spice is just okay. Look, I don't know about you guys, but when I eat spicy foods, my scalp tingles. It's kind of weird, <laughs> it's, it's weird, but it does. I don't know why. Does, you, does yours? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm sure you know Darjeeling and Assam, but have you ever heard of Karnataka or Kangra? Does Munar ring a bell? I don't blame you. I had no idea that these kinds exist either, and those are just the Wow. once you get into the types of chai by adding particular spices and herbs. It's crazy. For example, masala chai, which is made with cinnamon, ginger, cloves, and herbs. I personally fell in love with butter tea. It's so thick and creamy. Oh, sounds good. I could drink it by the butter cow. tea. Basically, you take tea leaves, some butter, hot water, and salt. Mix it all up and <laughs> thank me later. 
I'm gonna test it right now. With a full belly and plenty of chai pumping through my veins, I was ready for sightseeing. <laughs> I landed in New Delhi. New Delhi. So I spent the rest of the day walking around and taking in all the sights. Whenever I go abroad, I like to carry a little phrase book in the local language. Well, Just in case, right? Wow. Those 22 official languages are just a drop in the huge linguistic ocean of the country. By different accounts, there are from 122 to 300 major languages spoken in India, as well as up to 1,600 less known ones. What? What? Now, does anybody actually know all those languages? That would be remarkable. Because me, myself, I, I, don't, I know two languages. I know Creole and English. That's it, but... 122 to 300 major languages, man. Come on. What? Basically, it's a lot. From one town to another, you'll hear people talking a different language. And if you happen to go to another state, you can forget everything you might have learned in your previous location. <laughs> How they manage to communicate with each other is still beyond me. New Delhi was awesome. I wish what? I could talk more about it, but I had a lot to see. I did find time to take a train up to Amritsar and see the Golden Temple. Ah. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. Langer. What is it called? Apparently it's a sight to behold. In 2011, so many pilgrims gathered in one place that the whole congregation of 75 million people was even visible from space. This Damn. Year, it's taking place from January until early March. So if you've seen it with your own eyes, just know that I'm so jealous. This is actually really fascinating. That's why you have to travel and open, open up your horizons, man. Like you got to see different places. You can't just stay home. You can't just be stagnant and see what you see every single day. Get on a plane, get on a cruise ship, take off, do something new. You know what I mean? Life is too short. See the world. The world is so beautiful. The world is so beautiful. And India is very, very beautiful. Very beautiful. In fact, whatever India does, it does it on a huge scale. For example, it has the largest number of post offices in the world. What? Wherever you go, you'll stumble upon one literally. What? The irony of this is that it doesn't really help the situation with delivery times. One Indian guy told me it's totally normal to wait for your package to be delivered in two weeks' time, even if it was sent from a nearby town. But hey, wow. Patience is a virtue. That's patience for real. But it doesn't stop there. India places third in terms of the number of Guinness World Record holders. Crazy. The world's fastest nose typer, the most expensive wedding ever held, and the most selfies taken together. Are just a few of the, <laughs> the most selfies? World I see why. The country's extensive railway network, these people are scattered. A million employees? I mean, I guess for all the post offices, you gotta have a lot of employees, I guess, right? That makes sense. Throughout India, Only makes sense. From the smallest villages to the biggest cities, the number of jobs grows every year. So it looks like you could always get a job there if you're looking for employment in India. Anyway, what can I say about my final impressions? I was blown away. Seriously, didn't want to leave this fascinating place. Visiting it was like going to a whole new world for me. I tried Incredible, to get as many souvenirs as I could, but I almost forgot one important thing. If you ever go there, by the way, 
you'd better remember it too. No one is allowed to take India's national currency in or out of the country. It's actually against the law, so make sure you change your money before you cross the border. I almost made this mistake, but a friendly local told me to exchange my rupees at the airport, and off I went. Headed back home with my suitcase. I got a visit one day. And my head I have to. With impressions. I, w I want to visit one day, but I'm scared of pickpocketers. I heard they pickpocket a lot over there. I don't know. I don't know, because I live in the U.S. I don't know. Let me know. Do they pickpocket a lot over there or no? I don't know. But anyways, guys, man, this was uh, very informative and very interesting. I had no idea. I had no idea. India is a beautiful, it's a beautiful place. Wow, but all those languages, though? I can't fathom myself around the fact that people speak five languages, let alone 122 to 300. That's, that is beyond me right there. But guys, thank you for watching. Go down below, smash a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, love you guys. See you next time.